Okay, so here I show you the results. So the polarized neutron reflectometry data was taken <coughs> at three temperatures. At three temperatures. So one is at 300 K, at 300 degree Kelvin, neither LSMO is ferromagnetic nor the YBCO is superconducting. So this is it. Then data was taken at 100 Kelvin. At 100 Kelvin, LSMO is, has a Curie temperature of 290 Kelvin. So this is ferromagnetic, but the superconductor is still normal. And then at 10 Kelvin, 10 Kelvin, when the magnetic material is ferromagnetic and the superconductor has become superconducting at 65 Kelvin. So it is a combination of superconductor, insulator and magnetic material. So polarized neutron reflectometry data was done, taken, sorry, taken at three temperatures and these are three zones. First room temperature data. You can see here the plus is shown as red and the minus is shown as blue. There is no difference between the two because when it is not magnetic then R is equal to R plus or R minus. They are same. Reflectometry is same and that is exactly what you find at 300 K room temperature. Now then let us go to 100K data. The 100K data, it shows the, the first signature is that there is a separation between the red and the blue. That means the R plus, R plus is not equal to R minus. When that happens, that means the sample has got a magnetic moment density because you now know that I kept talking about V plus and V minus, they are different, critical angles look different and the samples show different intensity. So when we fit it, what we find? So now here I will get the magnetic moment density profile in the LSMO layer. This is anyway not superconducting, I mean not superconducting, not magnetic. Insulator layer is also non-magnetic. The only magnetic layer is the LSMO layer and I try to get the magnetic moment density profile <coughs> in the LSMO layer. And interestingly, at 300K, we have whatever we had, at 200K, we have got the magnetic moment density profile as given. So at 300K, black means we had no magnetization. At 200K, we have got a profile which tells me this is the bulk part of the LSMO layer and towards the interfaces the magnetization reduces, magnetic moment density reduces and bulk of the thin film LSMO layer, LSMO's maximum part of the layer, they are ferromagnetic. Now when we go to 10K, the now the ferromagnetic LSMO is at a tunneling junction from a superconducting YBCO. What happens? One interesting thing is that when we reduce the temperature, we are we are aware that if we plot magnetization versus temperature, we have got a plot like this. <coughs> that means as you go down in temperature, magnetization increases. And that's what we find. The data 300K non-magnetic, 200K magnetic. When you went to 100K, the magnetization density increased exactly matching with what I showed you B versus T plot. Now we are going to 10 degree Kelvin. At 10 degree Kelvin, you see the profile, the major profile remains nearly same. Now 
this part is the insulator part and then we go to the YBCO part. So YBCO has zero magnetic moment density. But please see this STO part. This is the sorry. This is the insulator. So this is the superconductor. This is a ferromagnet and this is the insulator. Watch this part. This part. When I have gone superconducting, then at the interface you can see this magnetic moment density drop to zero drastically drop to zero or close to zero marginally negative now this is something typical of cooper pair tunneling if the cooper pairs s equal to zero cooper pairs the s equal to zero cooper pairs they enter a ferromagnet a ferromagnet then they will tend to cancel the magnetism in ferromagnet because that is the nature of superconductors and here the penetration depth will dictate up to what distance it partially or fully able to cancel out the magnetic moment density and that's what we found in this experiment now you can see that at 100 k 200 k we have this interface magnetic moment intact it reduces but it doesn't drastically go to zero when we went into the superconducting mode for the superconductor this is the interface moment has gone to almost zero and this is a signature of cooper pair pair tunneling this is a uh, very very interesting observation so far as tunneling of Cooper pair is concerned used uh, I mean, which I have been able to understand by using polarized neutron reflectometry on this sample this experiment was done at FRM2 so I have shown you two examples one a non-magnetic cobalt that I could catch using polarized neutron reflectometry and here in case of a superconductor insulator ferromagnet tunnel structure I could also catch the tunneling of Cooper pairs from the superconductor into the ferromagnet in terms of reduced magnetic moment density at the interfaces. So with these two examples, I hope I have been able to justify that polarized neutron reflectometry is an ideal tool to understand interface magnetic moments in interesting samples. Here one was cobalt, the other one is a ferromagnet LSMO where we have observed Cooper pair tunneling. So these two studies were meant for R plus and R minus measurements without any polarization analysis. From here, I jump into the next part, which is reflectometry with polarization analysis. So there is an incident polarized beam, which is plus or minus, and there is an analyzer in the reflected beam, as I showed you in the two experimental setups. At the two experimental setups, let me just quickly show you two experimental setups. You have analyzers here and analyzers here. So, with this, we can do a polarization analysis uh, of the reflected beam. So, we can measure R plus plus, R plus minus, R minus minus, and then minus plus. So, we have four sets of reflectivity data now. So, now my measurements will comprise this is my sample so I am doing analysis of the reflected beam so plus goes to plus is R plus plus then plus goes to minus R plus minus then I have got a down polarized beam then R goes to minus to minus 
it is r minus minus and then again as so there are two spin flips plus going to minus and minus going to plus so these are spin flips and there are two which are plus going to plus and minus going to minus these are non spin flips so we have got four sets of data two of them are non spin flips two of them are spin flips and from here i will be able to determine the magnetic structure in the sample so we measure four of these i'll stop here before i go on to the next model